What is up everyone? In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about how to test HTTP handlers in Golang. A lot of people are using Golang as their backend services or their APIs, but not everybody knows exactly how to test them correctly. But before I'm gonna going to continue, still 50% of the viewers watching my videos are not subscribed yet. And you can do me an enormous favor by subscribing to the channel. Leave a question in the comments and give me a thumbs up. And for the people that really want to level up, I also have a Patreon page where I'm dropping the most exclusive videos. You cannot find these on the internet. Nobody is teaching you that stuff. It's only on my Patreon page. Check it out. Let me know what you think about it. And if you don't like it, you can just dip out. All right, let's get started. <clears throat> so we have two files here. We have the foo handler and the foo handler test, right? Before we can test the handler, we also uh, need to create one. So we're gonna say func, and we're gonna say handle get foo, right? And we're gonna say w, it's gonna be HTTP response writer. And it's gonna take an R, which is an a pointer to an HTTP request, right? Request, just like that. So what we're gonna do first is basically, uh, we're gonna make sure that if the request method if that is not going to be an HTTP method get, right? Then we're gonna say, yo, I'm gonna return here. So the, the code below, this statement is not going to execute it. And we're gonna write a status code to the response. And that's gonna be w write header. And we're gonna say uh, HTTP status uh, not allowed, right? That's what we're gonna do. And after, uh, if you are here in our code, we are 100% sure we have um, a method get. So we could basically say uh, R, we're gonna say W, write header once again, but we're gonna write an HTTP status okay, right? And then we're gonna write uh, actually what we wanna return because we're gonna get foo. So we're actually gonna write some bytes and it's gonna be just foo, right? Actually, uh, let's, let's make it caps, right? because it hits, it hits harder, right? So that's a simple header, um, uh, handler. In your case, you're basically returning JSON or something, uh, but that's the same thing, the only, it, it's just bytes, right? Everything is bytes in this world, so it's all good. Uh, on the other side, on our test, we're gonna say um, func test. We need to prefix this with test, so Golang will automatically run it if it has the correct signature. We're gonna say test handle get uh, foo. Right, and it's gonna be a W, no, it's gonna be a T testing dot T. Right, cool. So I'm gonna actually open up the test on this screen and the handler on that screen uh, like that, and it's already been done. So it's a little bit easier to follow. Cool, so how are we gonna test this? There are actually two ways. We can use uh, something that Go provides us. We can actually use two things that uh, Go provides us in the standard library, and that's basically the HTTP test server and the HTTP response recorder. Um, they do the same things, but not actually. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what, what, why the response recorder could be handy and why not. So, but first we're gonna do the first approach, and that's basically the HTTP test server. And we can say um, server is going to be HTTP test new server, and this will take in um, a handle func. So we're gonna say handle get foo. And you will see that it's not gonna work. That's because um, it's gonna tell us that this handle foo doesn't implement the surf HTTP method, you will see. It does not implement the HTTP handler missing method surf HTTP. But that's no big of a deal because we can just say HTTP handler func. And it's all fine. Uh, that's good. So we have the server. The next thing we're gonna do is perform a GET request, right? So we're gonna say that the response and the error is going to be HTTP GET, like this. And we're gonna say, we need to provide a URL and the server has exactly what we need. Our server has uh, exposed URL, a variable. Uh, and then we're gonna say, if the error is not null, of course, we're gonna check that. And if that's an error, we're gonna say T error and just put the error in call it a day. Right, then we have the response. The first thing we're gonna do is check if the response status code is exactly what we are looking for, which is basically 200, right? So we're gonna say, if the response status code, if that is not uh, HTTP status, what's going on here, VS code with these type hints, I'm getting elliptical uh, tags, uh, HTTP status okay, 
if that's not the case, I'm going to say T, error F, and we could say uh, expected 200, uh, but got percentage D, and that's going to be the response status code, just like that. And if we say go, if you want to test, go is very simple. You say go test, right? You could put uh, a verbose for uh, if you have print lines in your test, it will put out in the screen. And then uh, to test everything in your project, we do just dot slash dot dot dot, and it will test everything. And it works as intended, right? Because if we return, for example, here a status, uh, a bad gateway or something, and we test again, I hope it doesn't cache. Nope. Then we're going to see expected 200, but got 502, right? Okay, the next thing is what we're going to test is basically uh, we are returning foo, so we're going to check if that exactly is what we what we expected, so, right? So we're going to say that the expected <coughs> uh, is going to be foo. It's going to be a string of foo, right? And the first thing we're going to do is basically uh, say that the bytes is going to be uh, IO till. IO till uh, is going to be a read all. So we're going to read everything from the body, right? And if you want to be precise, you need to say defer response body. And we're going to close that thing to prevent memory leaks. But yeah, in this, in this test, it doesn't really matter. But hey, we're going to we're gonna make it, we're going to do it like it's. Like it's good, like it's needed, like it's intended. So we have these bytes here, right? And what we could do is we could say if the string of the bytes, right? If that is not equal to uh, the expected, which is full, then we can say a T error F, right? And we could say expected percentage S, but we got percentage S and we want the expected, but we got actually a string of B just like that. Uh, what's going on ish? Uh, B, R. It's the error. It's my bad. It's my bad. So we're gonna check the error real quick. So I'm gonna dump this guy here. And then we can actually test it again. We could say go test. Um, dot slash dot dot dot. Right. And it's all fine because we, we expect it foo and we, we get foo. Right. But if we return a bar, for example, somebody makes a mistake. And we're going to run that again. Then uh, we get this error, expected foo, but we got bar. Right? Somebody made a mistake, so you can fix it. Ah, oh, mistake. And you could say foo. And uh, test it again. And uh, boom, everybody's happy. CI is happy. Get up. Everybody, everybody's happy. That's, that's, that's the goal of life, right? Making everybody happy. Cool. That's the first thing, um, how you can test your header. Right? Just, and you could test headers, right? If you set a header, you could... Uh, you, you get the point, right? You have response status code. You could do uh, response uh, headers and all that stuff, right? And you could test all that, all that shenanigans. If you have an API token or something, uh, you could test that. Cool. The next thing is we're going to do is we're going to use the response recorder, right? So we're going to say, uh, let's copy the whole shebang here so we don't need to type that much. We're going to say test handler get foo uh, RR. Why RR? Because that's response recorder. Um, yes, so the first thing we need to do is we're going to say that the RR is going to be an HTTP test uh, response recorder, just like that. Actually, no, it's going to be a new recorder, my bad. Right? And for this new recorder, what basically what it's going to do, this recorder is going to capture everything you write with your response writer. Right, is if you... Uh, if you write a header, if you write uh, bytes to, to that thing, it will actually capture everything, so you can test that, right? It's basically the same thing like HTTP server is doing, but what you could test here is, for example, if you set a header, right? You could check a header. But how, how do we actually know who has, who has set that header, right? Maybe it's a header we have set in our server, right? We could say we... Uh, headers, uh, I think we need to make a function and we could set, uh, for example, x um, request ID or something, you know, eh, something something like that, right? That's a header we have set in our handler, right? But it could be that uh, this header already has been set by something else, by the request or, or I don't know, uh, maybe it's a proxy, a reverse proxy or something. So how can we check that this header is actually being set by our response 
writer. That's uh, where this um, response recorder can be handy, right? For such kind of things. And for testing reverse proxies and all that stuff, right? But, uh, so we're going to say, we can also test our handler with this perfectly fine. So we're going to say the response recorder is this, but we need to have a request, right? Because we're going to have uh, our handler, it's going to be something like this, handle get foo. We're going to pass in this uh, response recorder, which is the writer, but we also need a request, right? Uh, how are we going to do that? Because HTTP get is not a request, it returns a response. So the thing we need to do is we're going to say request r it's going to be HTTP new uh, request. And we're going to say it's going to be an uh, HTTP method get. Uh, then we need to provide an uh, URL, but we don't care, right? Because in our case, we don't need to have the URL because we don't access query parameters, right? Uh, sometimes it could be that you have, uh, that you need to, um, I don't know, uh, maybe you need a user ID or something, right? And you could do that if you want, but we don't need that. So we don't want to do it. And then we need to provide a body in a new request because we can also say method post and with a post we need a body, which is a byte reader, uh, byte, which is an IO reader. But in our case, it's a get request, so we don't care. So we can say no, right? And then we're going to check the error as usual. Uh, if and VS code is lagging like a, like an illegal world, a word. So we're going to say, um, if the error is not null, I'm going to say T error F, the error, and everybody's happy. And then we have this request here, right? And that's exactly what we need. So we're going to say handle foo request, right? And uh, as you can see, this handle foo doesn't return anything because it's this guy, right? And what I always do is basically return an error, right? Like this in my handlers, but then you're going to, everybody's going to complain because nobody is compatible anymore, but you could do, um, you can wrap that in into a decorator function that returns a HP handler function and all that stuff. But that's uh, already advanced, uh, and that's for another video. Right. Um, T error, what's going on, Ish? If that is not nil, T error, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, like this, perfectly fine. So then we're gonna actually call this function with our recorder and our request, and what it will do is we'll basically record everything what we have written to our a writer here, right? So we can do the same thing, right? Uh, let, let us basically grab everything from here and refactor it so it works with this recorder. And we're gonna paste it in here. And then instead of saying response, because we don't have that, everything uh, in this case, right? You can see that everything is recorded into the response. And um, in this case, everything is going to be recorded into the response recorder, if that makes sense. So we're gonna say, um, or, or I think it's a result, a result, uh, in this case it's going to be our, our result, it's going to be the result, result, like this, um, it's going to be the result, is it body? Yes, result body, which is fine, let's delete this guy, hop, and you can see that if we run this test, that it works perfectly fine, right? It's exactly the same thing uh, to test your handlers, but without the server, uh, but hey, it just returns. Uh, that's another approach, right? So that's basically how you test HTTP handlers. Of course, um, in your case, you maybe have JSON, but it's, it's exactly the same. Uh, it's just, uh, instead of uh, doing, doing an IO read all, you could do a JSON uh, new decoder and decode that into your struct and, and then check if you have the correct values coming from your database, right? Uh, that, all that good stuff, right? So if you like this kind of content, if you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. Leave a question in the comments. Jump into the Discord, very important. I have a Discord community uh, with over 350 people where we daily, continuously, 24 seven, learning from each other, helping each other with the projects and all that stuff. And uh, thanks for watching this video and I see you. I'm looking forward to see you in one of my live streams or future videos. Bye-bye.